Speak to my heart, oh God. <laughs> this is always a fun devotional to share because it seems like every time that I start to think that we could just read right through it and you know, knock it down or share it or relate to it, she'll write a long one. <laughs> and then trying to keep this under 10 minutes or approximate, it's been challenging, so I've gotten to the point where I just read, well, maybe half of it. <laughs> At some point in time where it seems appropriate, basically stop. So if you possess this book and you notice that some of them seem a little short, that's why. <laughs> in Evotion, you know, we've always been real about where and what and how and everything that goes on all about these recordings and the reality of life as it's being lived through the devotionals. And so that's why I bring up these things and remind you that this is not pre-programmed or preset or pre-made or edited. What it is, is it, as it is, so it is. <laughs> and what it is, something like that. When you are gripped by fear, are there times when you feel as if an army has come against you? Maybe they're not at all wearing the same uniform, but they all seem to be converging on you at once. As a result, you're having a hard time handling all that life seems to be throwing at you at the present. Nothing definite has been said, but in your heart of hearts, you're sure that certain people are not pleased with you. You can tell by the way they act, the way they look at you, their tone of voice, or by the fact that when you appear on the scene, they either change the subject they're discussing with others or they simply walk away. Your mind is going crazy, you're scared, and fear is doing funny things to your body. Maybe it's not open combat, but you feel the chill of a cold war. You don't know what's going to happen, but you just have a feeling that it's not going to be good. Maybe your stomach is in knots, or maybe you can't sleep. What do you do? Well, first of all, you need to remember that you're Struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 If you think people are coming against you, there's someone behind it all, the enemy of every child of God, that serpent of old, the devil, the accuser of brethren, the father of lies. What you're imagining may or may not be fact, but either way, it's torment. His fiery darts have started fires that are hard to extinguish. So what do you do? You need to remember that the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. And because it's his and not yours, it must be fought his way. You are to stand firm in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Ephesians 6.10 Just as God told his people Israel that they would not be delivered by horses or chariots or a multitude of armies, but that their deliverance would come from the Lord. He assured them that he would fight for them. So the Lord is your covenant partner. Don't go into battle without the captain of the host. And how do you remember all of this when you fear for your welfare? Or when you shudder at the thought of what the future may hold? Or when you simply hurt because others have come against you? You need to do what Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, did when he heard that a great multitude was coming against him. Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he turned his attention to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. 2 Chronicles 23. Jehoshaphat knew where to turn. He knew where his help would come from. Listen to what he says. O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not God in the heavens? And are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary there for your name, saying, Should evil come upon us, the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry to you in our distress, and you will hear and you will deliver us. Second Chronicles 20, 6-9 And although Jehoshaphat did not know specifically what to do, he knew where to look. 
he said, O oh, our God, we are powerless before this great multitude. Who are we to come up against them? Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Second Chronicles 20.12 Do you feel threatened? Tell God. It's pretty simple. Cry out to him. Have a personal conversation with him. Are you gripped by fear? Recognize that truth is what God already knows you're in, and you need to share it with him. The spirit of fear does not come from God. Resist it. For God hath not given us this spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1.7. Listen to Jehoshaphat's proclamation of faith. Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. 2 Chronicles 20, 15, 17. Bow your head and worship the Lord. Look at his worthiness. Believe what he believe that he is who he says he is, and that he will do what he said he will do. It's pretty simple to me. You put God on the one side and you put your problem on the other, and you say, Is God big enough? <laughs> How big is your God? Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and the word, and succeed. Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. 2 Chronicles 20. If you follow these steps, you'll find sweet release and sweet victory. 1. Submit to God. Talk aloud to God. Tell him that he can do anything he pleases with you, and confirm again your desire to serve and follow him fully. Tell him that you're the one and foremost passion is to be found pleasing to him and that you want Jesus to be exalted in your body, whether by life or whether by death. Because after all, O oh death, where is thy sting? Is it to be feared? No, we have eternal life. Philippians 1.20 Now if your heart's desire isn't to be pleasing to him, then ask God to show you why it isn't. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. James 4, 8-10 2. Now take realization that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, and you lean not into your own understanding, if in all your ways you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. As he directs you, so you should do. When you find that a reality in your life, then you know always, in any circumstance, don't turn to a solution, don't turn to the problem, but turn to God and ask him what he would have you to do. In that, you will find not just an answer, but great peace of mind and satisfaction. I have. Maybe you will.